to New Redeemed Church. Place where miracles happen, souls are saved, and lives are turned around. Oh
Another year the Lord has allowed us to be here. So many didn't make it. A lot of churches closed down, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, we're still here. Oh, no, they ain't going to talk this morning. I said, look at somebody and tell them, we're still here. Tell somebody else, we're still going strong. And he is worthy to be praised. We have our honored and distinguished guests on this morning, none other than my father in the gospel, Apostle Van Z. Moore. stingy with y'all praise today, huh? I got two people standing up. We're going to try this again. Somebody ain't had no coffee. Amen. We thank God for our honored guest today, Apostle Van Z. Moore. Amen. That's a little better. Amen. After the service we had on Friday night, y'all ought to be on fire. Somebody say amen. Did not the Lord move in this place on Friday night? Oh my God. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful today. Looking for even higher heights and deeper depths in God on today. We are looking for God to do the supernatural. Somebody say amen. At this time, we're moving forward. I want to thank God for our first lady, our pastor, Darlene Louise Young. diligently to bring about a awesome revival. Amen? We thank God for you, honey. God has kept us another year. Amen. While you're getting yourself, your offerings together, I'm giving you time. Amen. So you have time to get your offerings together now. Amen? You need a tied envelope. Raise your hand. Amen. I see it. You need a tied envelope. I see it. You need another, you see another hand. And then you need a tied envelope. Raise your hand. We're getting all this out the way now. So that when the word of God comes forth, we'll be free. Somebody say amen. amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a word from God. Amen? Amen. 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 Look at your name and say me too. Me too. All right. So at this time, um, we thank God for also our honored guest, uh, Apostle Harry Washington. God bless you, man of God. Uh, Apostle amen. Chuck Jones, God bless you. Amen. Hanging with the Jones this morning today. Daughter, God bless you to all the saints of God. My dear friend in the back, Brother Stanley, God bless you, young man. And uh, I don't know how Brother Stanley feel. It really don't matter. He's going to sing for me today. Amen. Amen. He's going to give us a little something. Amen. Uh, today. But before Brother Stanley comes, Sister Naya is coming with our announcements. Give God a praise for her as she comes forth. Praise the Lord's name. The Lord. Today will be the close of our church anniversary. This is, this is the upcoming dates and locations for the Soldiers for Christ Fellowship. September 24th at 7.30 p.m., Pastor Dunbar Praise Power and Deliverance, 528 East Haines Street. October 29th at 7.30 p.m., Pastor Mount Tabernacle of Praise Church 5831 Germantown Ave. November 19th at 7.30 p.m., Pastor Houston, Greater St. Thomas Church 3018 Germantown Ave. December 17th at 7.30 p.m., Bishop Dawson, Greater Impact Worship Center, 2431 North 6th Street. January 28th at 7.30 p.m., Bishop Pennell's Victory Through Christ Church, 1463 Chesapeake Road, Camden, New Jersey. February 25th at 7.30 p.m., Elder Brown, New Redeem Church, 5001 Germantown Ave. March 25th at 7.30 p.m., Pastor Reggie Hill, Convenant of Glory Ministry, 533 North 60, 36th Street, Philadelphia, PA. 
We would like everybody to please keep in mind our Friday night hour of prayer and service over the telephone at 7 p.m. We would also like everybody to please keep in mind Wednesday Bible study also at 7 p.m. Amen. So let's keep these announcements in mind and cover ourselves accordingly. That one that the one that you mentioned where Elder Brown has been changed, that's actually going to be at Bishop Dash Church on 12th and Lehigh Avenue. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to invite into a short program, and then we're going to get ready to take up our offering. I'm trying to get some of the saints more time to get in here. Amen. Somebody say Amen. I think we're going to start off with my dear friend and brother, Pastor Chuck Jones, who's going to come and bless us at this time. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and praise him. It's all right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I always say anniversary time is the time to reflect back on where God has brought you from, where you are right now, so you can position yourself for where God wants to take you. Amen. Apostle Moore always say, we're going somewhere, and God is taking us. But the question is, are you willing to go? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, this particular song takes me back from where I first met God. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, all of us, when we were all wretches undone. Hallelujah. This particular song takes us back to when we first met the Lord. Amen. Because he thought that we were worth saving. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was the die for so you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I can tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside you thought I was the devil, so you sacrificed your life, so I could be free, so I could be home, so I can tell everyone I know, you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I can tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I can tell everyone Yeah. 
to prove that Jesus, how many of y'all that know that Jesus lives? And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh God, because he lives. All my fears are gone. And life is worth the living God. And life is worth the living God. My life is worth the living God. Because, put your hand together and say, He lives. He lives. Place every tomorrow because Jesus lives. All of my fears, all of my doubts, they're gone. To go old church. My soul loves Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. My, my soul loves Jesus. My, my soul loves Jesus.
Take me higher in you, Lord. 
dripping from the sword. The Spirit said, that's the blood. I said, is that the blood of Jesus? The Spirit said, no. No. That's the blood of them demons. He done slain before he came in here. Ah, it's a dragon slave. He told me one time, he said, son, keep your sword out. He said, don't put your sword back in his sheath. Until you got it dipping from demon blood. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. Well, it's time for the word of God. People standing. I want to make this announcement before he comes up, so I don't want to make it afterwards. We have prepared food upstairs. Do me a favor, please. Do not leave without getting you some food. We got all this food. Man, we got food on top of food. Don't leave early now. Try to go up there. Wait till we get the benediction. But we got food on top of food, on top of food, on top of food. So please don't leave. Make your way upstairs to the banquet hall. We're going to eat. 
and drink and be merry after we finish praising God down here. Amen? Amen. Well, it's time for the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away before God's word shall fail. Lift your hands up and say, Apostle Ben Moore. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I heard some of y'all, before y'all even came to the church, y'all was louder than that. Come on, say, Apostle Ben Moore. Listen, if you're going to hit the symbol, hit the symbol. Come on, say, Apostle Van Moore. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Put your hands together, everybody. Put me some love for my father in the ministry. Apostle Van D. Moore. Get my word. Father, we do bless your holy name. We give you praise, honor, and glory. This is your Sunday. We celebrate these churches, yes, yes. anniversaries, and these many years. But this is your Sunday. Thank you for how you have established your word, your power, and your glory in this place. Thank you for the forerunner and thunder that passed the baton to this great man. And they're still running in your name. Nothing has fell to the ground. But it has been exalted even greater. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all of those that have been maintaining, oh God, in this holy station. Ashando. Thank you for the work that has been done. Thank you for the wars that have been won. Thank you for the battles that have been fought. Thank you for the sacrifices continually rolling through this house. Thank you for every mother, for every father that then went on home. I shun them. Thank you for those that are still remaining. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord, that they did not let down. I shun them for this, this station house. Let the light go dim. Thank you for that, oh God. Continue to bless and continue to live. Continue to exalt. Bless my son and bless my daughter, Lord, and bless their family and bless those that are still maintaining my God in this holy house. Continue to anoint them and empower them, Lord God. Continue to do miracles, my God. And Healings and deliverances, oh God. Continue to light this area up in your name. Continue to bind up, my God, and lose in your name. Continue to exalt the name of Jesus, my God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless them and strengthen them, Lord God. In the weary nights, oh God, when you find what's going on in their mind. Continue to bless them, God. Be every financial, every spiritual, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Bless all those that lift their hands. And my God, bless those that praise. And bless those that pray, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for an apostolic house. Thank you, God. Now, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you for the honor of standing behind this holy place. Before your holy people. Pray even now, God, that you begin to destroy yokes. Begin to heal, set free, and deliver. Now here I am again, God, standing behind this sacred desk. Knowing that I cannot stand without you. Holy Ghost, have your way. For we ask it, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Truly we give honor to God who is first. And I often say foremost in my life. I do honor him completely and thoroughly for what he has done in my life. And just to come over here in this house. Let's give the Lord a praise of for this great man of God. Amen. Amen. And then to this prophet is this great battle axe, this great war, this great trumpet in God. Love you, darling. God bless you, daughter. Love you. Thank God for you. Amen. I understand that Mother Brown is not here, but y'all give her my love in her absence. So thank God for the woman of God. And then to all of the clergy in this house, to Bishop, amen to my apostle here and to apostle there, amen. And all the ministerial brethren of the five-fold ministry gifts, we honor you today. And to God's precious people, we thank God for you. Thank God for this house, amen. Still standing. Come on, somebody. This house that took some blow, but still standing, amen. The yes, name yes. of Jesus burns brightly here. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for the opportunity to stand with you. I stand with you, son. I want you to know I love you. Until God closed these eyes, I will love you, son. You hear what I'm saying? And then when, I, when he closed them and sent me the glory, I'm going to holler Jesus' name. But your name will be called the son. Hallelujah. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Amen. I bless God for being here. I don't want to be here long. Amen. But you know, they, you know, these are dangerous and very perilous times. Uh, the pandemic is, is a very dangerous uh, thing, but it's not the most dangerous thing that's out there. Y'all don't hear me. You know, all that violent shooting and all that, it, it is very dangerous, it's, it is very violent, but it's not the most dangerous thing out there. It's not. Amen. You got the politics, and politics now is very dangerous. It may be, uh, be about, but it's not the most dangerous thing out there. And it's not the most dangerous place. Let me tell you where the most dangerous place is. It's behind this pool. It is very dangerous. I shall go to stand in this holy place. It's very dangerous. Amen. A lot of people don't know that. You got a lot of people stand behind here but don't know the danger of standing behind this pool. We've had so many different people stand behind the pulpit without any regard. Y'all don't hear me. Don't even know the danger that they're in. Hallelujah. Amen. There must have been, been a time, and there must have used to be a time when, when folk came past the church, they used to reference the church because they knew that there was something behind that church that was real. But now they have no regard. They don't understand the danger that they're in. Y'all don't hear me. God told me, he says, man, remind them that the most dangerous place is behind the pulpit of God. And the most dangerous person is a man of God. Don't you, don't you ever forget that. I know they look at us like we chumps and punks. And, and you, you know that we ain't got nothing. But you know God can save some demon folk. And y'all don't hear me. God can save some, some folk that ain't no chumps. Come on, somebody. Folk that been in the jails and, and folk that been almost in hell and folk that had murder and attempted murder. Folk that used to steal. Folk that used to lie. Folk that was terrible out there in the world. And now God can save them. Don't let nobody fool you. There's some dangerous folk standing behind this pool. Very dangerous, amen. And they understand that this is a dangerous place to be, amen. Hallelujah. So when I see a real, a real man of God, anointed for God and standing for God, amen, I understand that that's a dangerous man. 
Hallelujah. And I thank God that I understand that as I stand behind this pulpit, it's dangerous, it's dangerous to stand behind it here. Uh, amen. Uh, but I, I, I do have something I just want to touch on here and coming out of 1 Peter, amen, in the fourth chapter. Ah, Shando. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's just good to be up in here, son. The temperature is it's right. You hear what I'm saying on this pulpit? You, 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 you know that there's no mess jumping off up in here. It's, it's good to know that. Amen. You know the devil wants to get up in here. How I many know what I'm talking about? He wants to get up in here, but every time he tried, God cut the room short. How, hallelujah. Can't get it. Can't do it. Amen. The devil want to be on the pulpit. Amen. But it's too strenuous up here. Ah, Sean, y'all with me? I'm in First Peter, the fourth chapter. It says, For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Why? That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to lust to the lust of men, but to the will of God. I believe that we want to come down to verse 12, and it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Amen. I, I come to tell you to stay on. Stay on. Amen. You may be seated in the precious name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stay on. Amen. You, you know the saddest thing is a church that has been disarmed. Help me, Holy Ghost. I hate to say that in this time, but the church is so conditioned that it has been disarmed. Oh, amen. It, it, it has no will to fight. Y'all don't hear me. The church want to party with the world. They don't understand that when you are called into the Lord, that you are called into a battle. Whether you want to fight a battle or not, you are called into a battle. And if the devil can log you off the battlefield and get you to be in a partaker of the party mode, he got you. How many feel what I'm saying? Peter says, for as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Uh -huh. So two things we need to, to talk about. Being armed, and the other thing is suffering. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We know that in our right mind, nobody wants to suffer. In our right mind. Nobody really wants to suffer. Notice what I say, in our right mind. But this, 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 this what we're talking about don't have nothing to do with your right mind. Amen. Your right mind has to change and be transformed. Help me, Holy Ghost. There's no way you are going to go into a 
heart and mind of suffering in your right mind. So your right mind has to be transformed. So when you hear us using the word here uh, in, 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 in this particular uh, chapter and in, in, in these verses about suffering, it's about being transformed. Amen. You, you, you will never be able to handle the suffering of Christ. See, and, and what we have to understand when we start speaking about the suffering here is the suffering for righteousness sake. Amen. See, when we come to the Lord, he gave his life for us. But a lot of us don't understand he's looking for you to give your life for him. Help me, Holy Ghost. I know that because he died, we got the grace of God, and, and, and we're looking for God to do everything. But what God is looking for you to do is give your life to him. Hallelujah. And in the, in the traversing of you giving your life for him, he's asking you to suffer during that process. Amen. You know why? Because he knows you have desires. Come on, somebody. By nature, you have desires. There are desires that you have. And then there's things, amen, and this is the number one thing that, that keeps us from moving into the transformation through suffering is being attached emotionally to things that we value. Help me, Holy Ghost. He, 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 he asks us, he says, listen, I'm looking for a transformation to happen. I'm looking for you to lose your mind and take on the mind of Christ. I'm looking for a transformation to happen. Amen. And this transformation can never happen until you volunteer to give up your mind. And your mind is full of things that you desire. Help the Holy Ghost. And a lot of these things are good things to desire, but they cannot be a priority before the will of God. Amen. And so folks say, well, 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 what do you mean by arm, arm, arm yourselves? Arm yourselves mean to be at the ready. Be at the ready. Be armed. Be weaponized in your mind. Get your mind weaponized. And so when we use that word arm, it indicates that you need to be equipped for battle. Help me, Holy Ghost. Remember I told you, I said, whether you understand it or not, when you receive Jesus Christ and you accept him, you automatically are thrusted into a battle between light and darkness. Amen. And so he tells us, he says, the first thing I need you to do is to be armed, armed in your mind. I need you to be armed. I need you to recognize that you need to be weaponized in your mind. Amen. You got to be aware that you need to be armed. And the first thing about being armed in your mind, you must be detached. See, the number one thing that the devil does to the church, he gets you attached emotionally to things. Help me hold the See, if he can keep you attached to things, then he knows you will never get armed in your mind. How many feel what I'm saying? He keeps us attached to things, things that we're unwilling to give up because we emotionally attached. And so what, what, what God has to do, he has to show you something more valuable than what you already are attached to. How many of you what I'm saying? You ain't never going to give up what you value. Amen. See, there has to be a value change. And the church says, has not had a value change. And they're not aware that they got to have a, a value change. And so the things that you are emotionally attached to are things that you have, you consider to be high in value to you. Help me, Holy Ghost. You got to arm your mind. And the devil can keep you attached to things. Be unwilling to let go of things. Keep you so busy with things. You can never arm your mind for battle. Because you're un 
unwilling to what? Make sacrifice. To let go of those things you deem to be valuable. Help me, Holy Ghost, up in here. He, 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 he says, you, you, you've got to be at the ready to, when God is ready for you to do something, that you have to let go of the things that you value and attach to. Now, how can we, we, we do that? How can we arm ourselves? The first thing you've got to understand is the divine purpose for your life. Notice what I said, not just purpose, but divine purpose for your life. Amen. And then see the value of that purpose. Come on, somebody. A, a, a lot of people can't see the divine purpose in their life. And so, therefore, they will not lose or let go of the things that they are attached to. And we call that fleshly things. Fleshly things. Things that we uh, have, have built our hopes on. Things of our desires that we hope for in our life. Amen. And we get attached to them things and we, we refuse to let go of those things. Well, well God has to replace the value of that to the purpose that he's called you for. God got to let you see his purpose in your life. What he has for your life. What he's calling you to for your life. Amen. And therefore let you see the reality of the things that you value. That the things that you value cannot compare to the purpose that he's calling you to. How many feel what? Notice what I said. God got to show you that. Amen. And so how does he show you that? Well, the very things that we hope for, the very things that we attach to, he's got to show you that those things don't work in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And what I mean by that, they have to take a place in the, in, in the priority of your life. There's nothing wrong with being attached and having a desire for things. But they cannot be the priority in your life. And he has to show you that. Amen. Because a lot of the people think that those are the things are going to make us happy. Those are the things that's going to please us. But I'm here to tell you, I've I lived a long time, and I've had desired a lot of things, and I've accomplished a lot of things, but there is no lasting pleasure in those things. And those things, there's no lasting satisfaction. You will never be satisfied just with those things. And do I have a testimony in here? Do I have a witness? After you didn't have the brand the new car, amen. After you had got the home, amen. After you done got the family that God promised you, it don't look like what you thought it was going to be. It did not do what you thought it was going to do. It did not touch the areas that you thought it was going to touch. How many feel what I'm saying? Even the man that God gave you, the woman that you, he gave you, amen. After a while, cry to God. By and by, you'll lose your smile. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all don't hit me. He's got to show you that those things are not lasting in the satisfaction department. They're not satisfying. Hallelujah. He said you've got to get your mind on. And the only way you can get your mind on is to see your divine purpose. And when God starts showing you your divine purpose, he starts leading you down a path of righteousness. Y'all don't hit me. Got to get you willing to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that's a bad word in Christendom. Sacrifice. Amen. You're going to have to sacrifice those things that you attach to. You're going to have to loose your hand off of those things. The devil got the church all bound up. They can't do nothing because they're so attached to the things that they hope for in life. Amen. So they can't let their hand go. Amen. So he got to show you that what he's given you is worthwhile for you to let go of that world because it's more valuable in him. He's got to give you the wisdom of the world. 
Hallelujah. The only weapons that we have in God. See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Tearing down my God and the stripping of stronghold. We see, you, you, you don't have a carnal, a carnal mind in God. We don't have a carnal weapon. Our weapon is the word of God. Hallelujah. You got to learn that it's the word and nothing but the word by the Holy Spirit directing in the word that you stand on. Hallelujah. You won't see the strength of the power of the word until you learn to stand on the word once God has given you your divine purpose. Well, how will I know my divine purpose? First, you got to know the divine commission. The divine commission is that you get your yourself saved. You've been commissioned to go. Hallelujah. You've been commissioned to go. There will be a goal in your spirit. Hallelujah. You, you know, it, it ain't something that somebody has to tell you. It's an eight within you to go. Go what? Go tell somebody about your experience in God. Hallelujah. You may can't go to Paris or France or London or Africa, but you can go up in your home. How many feel it? And you will have a spirit to go once you will realize, amen, that God is God in your life. He will put a goal in you. It's the great commission to go. Hallelujah. Yeah, we can go through the whole steps of it, but you know what I'm talking about. It's, a, it's an innate in you to go. Go tell somebody, especially if you had a real experience. I ain't talking about a church experience. I'm talking about a God experience. Some people have a church experience. You ain't going nowhere. You just religious and all out. All you got is a social tea with the church. Come on, or social tea with the pastor, or social tea with an auxiliary. You ain't got no relationship. But you got a real, genuine relationship that has transformed you on the inside. There will be an innate spirit in you that says, Go. Go. You can't keep this inside of you. What I'm telling you and what I'm doing in you. You can't keep quiet about this. Amen. You got to go. Sometimes your goal is just a way help the Holy Ghost. Sometimes your goal is just an inward smile to yourself. Come on, somebody. Sometimes your goal is just a humming of a verse of a song. But I guarantee you, you're going to go. I'm going to feel what I'm saying. It's an inward, my God, my God, reflecting of yourself in God. God, he begins to show you that it's necessary for you to say something about him. Maybe just in with it first. But if it's really God, it's going to come out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You've got to arm yourself. So you've got to detach yourself. And that's what the enemy has done. He got the church attached to everything but the will of God. But the will of God. Some of these lying preachers have got you so caught up in material things and, and wanting things till you think things is God. But there's a place in God that God wants us to ascend to. He wants us to walk in the spirit. Come on, somebody. He wants us to transcend from this earthly to the heavenly. He wants our eyes to be open to spiritual things and spiritual ways and spiritual actions and spiritual things. Exalted above these things. Sexual affections are on things above and not on the earth. Amen. But how can you set your affection on things above when you have not been introduced to things above? How can you even desire them if the curtain has not been pushed back for you to see in the spirit? Hallelujah. To see the things of light and the value of them. Can't ask you to detach yourself from the earth 
if you never experience heaven. Help me, Holy Ghost. If you really want to experience life, you will start seeing heaven open up because you need what heaven has to fight the battle down here in darkness. Y'all don't hear me. First battle you have to fight is the battle with yourself. It's the greatest battle that you will ever fight. It is the battle of self-denial. Denying yourself. Help me, Holy Ghost. How many know that that's a big, great battle is to tell yourself no? Help me, Holy Ghost. You talk about a battle to tell yourself no? Oh, my God. You in a battle. It is the greatest battle I ever fought. And still fighting is to tell me no. People think the devil is a great battle. The devil is a great battle, honey. You got the greatest battle with yourself. How many feel what I'm saying? The things that I would do, <laughs> I find myself not doing. And the things that I say I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And Paul said it. I said, Paul, I understand what you're saying because I'm in the same boat. But Paul said, I find another way. Rock, rock is working its way in me. I, I find another spirit. I find another mind battling inside of me. Amen. Helping me, helping me, helping me do this. How? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That inward battle has to happen. It has to begin with you. And you can't battle by yourself. You got to call on the name of Jesus. When the battle begins, that's the time to call on the Lord. Amen. When you find yourself saying yes, my God, to that which you know will kill you, it's time to call on Jesus. I know it's all shiny now. I know it looks good now. I know you don't have to pay the price now. But there's always a raping when you go contrary to the will of God. Help the Holy Ghost. So you got to learn to deny yourself because yourself will get you in trouble. It'll put you in places where God never meant you to go. Amen. Your desires will put you in places. Amen. Yes, Miss Holy Ghost. Yes, Mr. Holy Ghost, your desires will put you in places that you know you should not be. So you got to get in the habit of arming yourself. How? By taking on the mind of Christ. How? Taking on the power of Christ. Calling on Christ. Asking Christ at the pivotal moment. God, I need you right now because I'm getting ready to make a decision to me in my life. Call on the name of the Lord. Huh? Help me, Holy Ghost. So the first battle, greatest battle is the battle with yourself. And you must fight that battle daily until it becomes habitual when you lose and Christ went out. Habitually, Christ comes before your appetite. Habitually, Christ comes before you make a decision. You consider Christ. How do I consider Christ? By his word. What is his principle concerning what I'm about to do? What does he say concerning this is what I'm about to do. It's not that your desires have to be denied, but it's your will. Come on, somebody. See, when we start talking about our desires, we're talking about you being emotionally attached to things. You're led by your emotions and not by your will. I don't let my emotions 
guide me and lead me. I let the will of God determine what I do. I submit my will to God's will. How many feel what I'm saying? In doing that, that's when you what? You suffer. You suffer because you allow God's will to overpower your emotions and you submit yourself to his will. And if you do it, you're going to suffer. How many feel? See, this is, this is the suffer we talk about. Suffering for righteousness. Let God have his will over your emotions. Let God have his will over your desires. Let God have his will over your attachments. On yourself. How many feel what I'm saying? And right now the church is unarmed. It's ran by emotions. It's ruled by desires. Everything that's in the church is what people want. It ain't what God wants. <laughs> Everybody got a, got something they want. And it's not it's not pleasing God. It's pleasing their own desires, what they desire. And the moment they can't get it, a whole lot of stuff start happening. A whole lot of complaints start happening. A whole lot of folk want to overrule. And that's when you have battles that should not be fought. Y'all don't like me now, do you? Uh -huh. Second battle is the battle of other people's opinions. Worried about what other people think. Worried about what other people got to say. Y'all don't hear me. If you come through the battle of self, now you got to come through the battle of other people. Come on, somebody. You got people right now, they dress the way they dress because of what other people think. Come on, somebody. They in relationships with people they don't even like. But because it's fashionable to be with them. And they care what other people think. That's what they do. How I many feel what I'm saying? You got, to, you got to come out of that, honey. You got to worry about what God thinks. How does God feel about what I'm doing? How does God feel about what I'm dressing? How does God feel about what I'm thinking? What I'm seeking? What I'm acting in? What I'm taking up? Who I'm taking up with? Who I'm in a relationship with? What God think? No, we worry about what other people say. Come on, somebody. Can't worry about what other people say. Everybody got an opinion about you. Oh, I think her dress is too short. Wearing too much, too much weave. Wearing too much makeup. You all on the outside of the woman, you don't know what's going on in the inside. Let God work that out. Get your Holy Ghost tail off somebody. You ain't nobody, Holy Ghost. Who made you the Holy Ghost? Who made you the Holy Ghost inspector? Who made you the one that is the Holy of Him? How many feel what I'm saying? Other people. You have to make that battle where you can't care about what other people say. Come on, somebody. It's about what God thinks. And let me say this. Be real until God changes. If you hoxy toxic, be hoxy toxic until God changes. How many feel whatever you are, be that until God changes. Don't do it for other people because it ain't real. It ain't relational. It ain't independent in God. It's fake. Of opinion that if God wants you to stop something, He know how to speak to you. He know how to talk to you. And listen, you don't know if, if it's God or not. That conviction be so heavy on you, you can't even breathe. 
He trying to hide from folk. Oh, be under so much conviction. You, you just hiding from folk. If folk ain't paying you no mind, they, they ain't even think about you. Hey, you hiding. Ducking and all. Where's your ducking, brother? Good to see you, honey. You know, we, we looking for you. We hiding. Ducking. That conviction got you. Holy Ghost know how to find you. Tell somebody, let the Holy Ghost do it. Yeah, just let him do it. You get your little Christian self off people. Get you, that's right. Get your Holy Ghost. You know prophetic prophecy and everything else. Prophesy to yourself sometimes. Get your lips off somebody. Let God do it. How many, arm yourself. And the last battle is with the kingdom of darkness. You can't battle with the kingdom of darkness until you battle with yourself. Come on, somebody. You've got to overcome yourself and be the champion over you. Then after that, then you've got to you know, win the battle of what others think. You've got, you got to win that battle. Then when you win both of those battles, the devil ain't got nothing on you. He ain't got nothing on you, baby. Because you're not attached emotionally to things any longer. Because if God tells you to give up something, you come. And you don't care what other people think, so they ain't got no power over you. Because that's one of the number one things the devil uses on us, what other people think. What they gonna think. You better know what God gonna think. God conscious. All other people. The three battles that must be fought in order to own to arm yourself. I'm almost done y'all. When y'all ready to get up on there? Chicken and chicken salad. Amen. Suffering. Once you go through those processes, and you go through the level of suffering because of it, it will cause a transformation to happen in your mind. That's how you start getting on because you start seeing the results of your action in God. And that action that we talk about is your relationship with God. You start relating to God, and God starts relating to you, and you start being transformed. Yeah. How many feel what I'm saying? And that's what the suffering does. Yeah. Because you now see that I, I'm not going to get out of this spot free. I'm going to get caused some pain if I let certain things go. When God starts sanctifying you, but well, that word sanctifying means to separate you from things. Amen. And some of the things don't have to be evil or bad. Right. But because of your divine purpose, you can't go the way of some others. And you can't do what some others do. Because God has called you to maybe a higher level of purpose. And therefore your level of sanctification or what we call separation from things, people, and others. How many feel what I'm saying? So during your process of, 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 of being suffering and going through the process of suffering, there is a transformation that happens. Amen. And you begin to understand a pathway that God is leading you down because of your divine purpose. Sometimes you have to separate yourself from friends and long-term relationships. Amen. When you do that, you suffer. And you know God is doing it because God will start separating you and he'll have them to start separating themselves. Because they see the change and your behavior. Some of the things that, that you used to do with them, you don't no longer want to do with them. Huh? Come on, somebody. Some of the places they want to go, you no longer want to go because God's been dealing with you and he's been convicting you and you said, no, 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 I, I, I can't do that. I can't go there. And they start looking at you strange. Come on, somebody. Now they're giving you strange looks. Sometimes even in your own family. 
You start getting the strange looks. Y'all don't hear me. Strange. Them strange, strange looks. And what that what I start happening is you begin to suffer for the sake of Christ. For his sake, you now taking on that suffering because you didn't have to do it. But because he showed you that he sent to find you and he's giving you some evidence, my God, that you are different now. Your mind is starting to get on now. Now you start to suffer for righteousness sake. Now you're going through. And what that suffering does, it brings forth that transformation. And then it starts bringing an established way in you. The way of God now is starting to be established in you. How? Because of my choices. I'm starting to choose God now over myself. I'm starting to choose God now over others. How many feel what I'm saying? Now I'm starting to be established in God. Help me, Holy Ghost. But I'm suffering because I still have emotional attachment to things. I still have emotional attachment to people. I still have emotional attachment to certain ways. But God now is beginning to establish me where those things are not important, but my divine purpose is. I'm starting to see now my divine purpose in God. The more sanctified I am, the more he separates me, the more vision of Holy Ghost comes in. I'm taking on another desire. I'm taking on another emotional attachment. I'm starting to see things about myself that I could not see before. I'm getting new vision about myself. Worried about what others think. I'm now looking at myself. I'm examining myself because I'm starting to see that God has a purpose for me. Now his purpose is coming into vision. Hallelujah. Now some of the things that the apostle has been saying is starting to make sense to me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now the vision of the house. I'm starting to see. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mind getting on. So that I can do the will of God. Battles are expected to happen in my life. I'm expected to battle me. I'm expected to battle others' opinions. I'm expected to battle the dark things that come because of me saying yes to God. Hallelujah. Through my suffering, I start to experience fortification. I'm starting to be fortified. <laughs> Stuff that used to bother me don't bother me no more. I used to get bothered by not going out with the girl. He only establishing me, he's fortifying me when that stuff just rubbing right off of me. The desires are changed. No longer want to be caught, my God, in dark places with dark people. Find myself in, in a whole other atmosphere. Find myself in a whole other environment. An environment that's conducive to grow in God. Find myself listening to people that have real wisdom instead of listening to fools. Help me, Holy Ghost. For the 
glorified him. Being established. And not only that, but because my transformation is happening, he started to sustain me. Help me, Holy Ghost. When I come into a crisis, amen, where I used to fall apart, amen, my God lose my mind, thinking that all things is over because I lost that or I, I left that. He starts to sustain me. I start understanding that my God, God is a sustainer. He's a keeper. He'll keep me in that. Yeah, I'm going through and I'm going through. It ain't the end of me. Because this crisis came. It ain't the end of me. God is a keeper and he will keep me. Through this crisis, he will sustain me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Start to see the transformation. He starts fortifying me. He starts establishing me. He starts sustaining me. And as I look around, I find myself enduring. Help me, Holy Ghost. I found myself where I didn't think I could make it through. I'm making it through. I'm enduring this. Hallelujah. See, a lot of my friends broken, destroyed because of the same thing I find myself in. But I find myself enduring it. I'm still strong in it. I'm still able to make it and be who I am in it. It has not touched my divine purpose. It has not changed my mind. I'm enduring
that heart investment then it's a part of you and you think God should understand he don't understand that especially once he starts revealing himself if you in this church sitting under this, this anointed man and woman of God God is in here revealing himself God the Holy Ghost the greatest, the greatest revelation of God is his love. You hear what I'm saying? It's what I count on. It's what I bank on. And that's what he banks on me, that I love him enough to give up what he tells me to give up. After he has proven himself so many times to me, when I should have been dead, when I should have been stepped over, when I should have been left behind, when I should have been Everybody resting upon our feet. Standing in this 32 years of celebration. God want that mind on. And he wanted to stay on. Stay at the ready. For when he ready to do what he want to do. You ready to do was necessary to be done. Hallelujah. Maybe there is one that's okay. Uh, possible. Maybe there is one that you, you've been here and you've been at church, but church ain't been in you. Well, you just out for the celebration the day you decided that you'd come because family members bugged you and You know, they, they've done the things to get you out of here. You're just enduring this for them. But somehow, something is ringing true to you. I submit to you that something that's ringing true is the Holy Ghost. That this is your time. And if you don't know the Lord, this is your opportunity to know Him. Amen. If you don't know him, I just want you to say these words with me. Father God, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. I confess the sins that you reveal. But I also confess I shut the Savior that you reveal. I take him into my life and all that goes with me. Now Lord, receive my soul into the fellowship of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. I shall not be done. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And if you said that, he's all up in your life. different transitions that you have gone through, and the different tests, the different trials, different aspects of God's glory, the different battles, the different fights, some with the enemy, some with, with other saints, all of that is part of having a glorious house, battles within and battles without. Overcoming them with the love of God. 
Father, I pray for this house. Pray for every member, past and present. Pray for those that are still wrestling with the fear of the pandemic. Don't know rightly how to overcome it, but God, we know that in pandemic times, you are still God. It don't change who you are. Your power, your love, your glory, your desire for us. Bind up every hindering spirit, every demonic presence, every activity of the enemy that would try to get in God's people's mind. God can take it to all their minds with the mind of Christ. Heard that some of the members are at home and are struggling in their health. Some are at an age where people think that because of age you should be sick. Not so. Bind up that sickness. Won't let age be an excuse for it to exist. Bind it up in the name of Jesus. Caleb and Joshua, my God, lived all the way through the 40 days, 40 year experience, and came out. Some of them at the age of 80 and 90, Lord God, still had their strength and they had not obeyed. Oh. Touch mothers at home, touch grandmothers at home, touch those that are sick in their bodies. In the name of Jesus, slip up your healing. Bless 
blessings flow through them. For you can trust them, Lord, that they will bless. Bless the lieutenant and the captains that stand with them. Bless my God, Apostle Brown. God bless him. Touch him. Keep him in his family. All that walk with the man of God. Pray for all the musicians where we know the enemy attacks them. Come against their desires. I, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and in all the young preachers that, that are coming up. Hey! Shako! Pray God's greatest anointing be upon them and then the mothers, the ship bearers. Pray for them, oh God. Keep them.
We've got to rearrange your thinking to another divine level. As real as that is real, show as real as the promises of God. As deadly as that is, as heavier is the hand of God. And as real as that is, realer is the hand of God.
I just want to give opportunity for those that came late to be a part of the offering giving. If you so desire, you don't want to shortchange you from getting blessed. You purposed in your heart before you left home to be a blessing. Somebody said amen. amen. Deacons come with a basket. Real quick, we're moving quickly. We're leaving from down here. We're going upstairs. I'm asking everybody to stay. Please don't go home. Don't waste. Is that brother Sterling back there? What's his name? What's his name? That's my brother. Uh, Deacon Joy, what's your brother's name? What's his name? Maurice. God bless you, brother Maurice. I haven't seen you in years. Bless you, Deacon Joy. Sister Glenn Dora, my God. God bless you, AJ. Good to see you. Listen, real quick, come quickly. Bring it quickly. Come on, come quickly. Never offer to give. Come and bring it quickly. Amen. This is only it's like we're not service. We're here every Sunday at. 12 o'clock noon, right here at 5001 Germantown Avenue, right in the heart of North Philadelphia. 5001 Germantown Avenue, right on the corner of Germantown and Seymour. We look forward to seeing you every Sunday at 12 noon. You need prayer? Meet us on our prayer line. You can watch any of our shows, our services on YouTube at New Redeemed Church at YouTube.com. Again, thank you for being with us. I'm your friend and brother. God